House Republican uh, leading an investigation into the Biden family's finances may have inadvertently revealed the true intention of his probe. In a Fox News interview yesterday, Oversight Committee Chair James Comer was asked whether he thought his investigation was the reason for an uptick in media coverage about the Biden family's business dealings. His response was to cite head-to-head -head poll numbers between President Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Do you think that because of your investigation, that is what's moved this needle with the media? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no question. You look at the polling, and right now Donald Trump is seven points ahead of Joe Biden and trending upward. Joe Biden's trending downward. And I believe that the media is looking around, scratching their head, and they're realizing that the American people are keeping up with our investigation. Now what we're realizing is actually you've made a fool of yourself time and time again. Uh, and you don't really, you can't cherry pick a poll uh, because a Republican poll that just came out recently, Public Opinion Strategies, which is, of course, as we've said here, is the most respected Republican pollster in Washington. Most, most Republicans would suggest that, been around for 25 years. Uh, their latest poll has, uh, I think it's from the 13th to the 15th of May, uh, has Joe Biden up over Donald Trump, uh, has him up even over Donald Trump in Georgia. We could go through all of his, it's tight, but but it, it, there's nothing, nothing coming out of Comer's investigation, but more embarrassments from him. Well, I mean, it, he hasn't produced any evidence, any evidence. And by the way, even uh, right-wing allies in the media say that would prove members of the Biden family engaged in any criminal activity. Uh, but of course, Willie, you listen to that, it kind of reminds you of somebody else, doesn't it? When, when we were all asking, wait, why are they freaking out so much uh, in, in hearings and screaming, uh, taking a tragedy and trying to turn it into some big political hit job uh, on Benghazi? And let's play the tape and we can see the parallels. There's a match. Everybody thought Hillary Clinton was unbeatable, right? But we put together a Benghazi special committee a select committee. What are her numbers today? Her numbers are dropping. Why? Because she's untrustable. But no one would have known any of that had happened had we not I agree. thought and That's made something that good. So, Jen Palmieri, that is Kevin McCarthy mm -hmm. in 2015 saying the quiet part out loud that her poll numbers are down, that it's proven Hillary Clinton is untrustable. Sorry, by the way, for using one of your trigger words, which is Benghazi, as someone who worked on the 2016 <laughs> campaign. Um, but there are notable differences here, at least, and that was only, what, eight years ago. At least they pretended or they tried to publicly say, Republicans did, that Benghazi was about getting to the bottom of the deaths of Americans at Benghazi. And they said this is not about Hillary Clinton. They said that publicly. And by the way, after Kevin McCarthy made those comments, Trey Gowdy, the chairman of that committee, the Benghazi committee, called him in, made him apologize publicly, said it was disappointing. Yeah. He's my friend, so it's especially disappointing. Every, Republicans made a big show of saying how disappointed they were in, in Kevin McCarthy and condemning what he had said. Not here, because ostensibly that was about the deaths of Americans, but explicitly in the case of this Biden family investigation, it is about Joe Biden. It is about his family. So they really can't say anything other than we're glad to see, at least in one poll, that they found that it is taking a toll. I mean, it just shows you the erosion of the integrity of the Republican Party, even in the last eight years, and also how young Kevin McCarthy <laughs> looked in that, right? That was like, it's shocking. Um, you know, responsibility ages people. Uh, but even, you know, that, 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 what Kevin McCarthy said in, uh, that was in 15 about Benghazi, first of all, one of the best days on the Clinton campaign, because it proved our, our whole theory that this was all political, um, and, 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 and not, and not within merit about what actually happened to Benghazi. Um, but then that, that was seen as costing Kevin McCarthy the speakership, um, that, that move. And, and he, and he did have to, he did have to backtrack it. And as you said, Trey Gowdy did go after him. And now, you know, Jim Comer, 
uh, the chair of the committee, uh, just goes ahead and asserts that is the purpose. The purpose is to uh, the purpose is to drive down mm. Biden's standing with uh, with the public. And um, I mean, alone, like Joe's point about the fact that these polls, you know, most of these polls definitely do not show Donald Trump beating uh, beating Biden. Um, but it shouldn't be the point. And also, they are failing even in trying to. Uh, you know, assert any kind of uh, real case against the against the Biden family here. Yeah, it's the exact same playbook that we have seen the Republicans use against Hillary Clinton in 2016, but it's a really diminished sequel. It hasn't worked. We saw it in 2020 <laughs> uh, so with Tony they, Babalewski or whatever that guy's yeah. name was. I just did a Tony <laughs> Babalewski so name drop here. Uh, wow. the, the business partner of Hunter Biden, who was the surprise guest at the debate oh in God. 2020, which was a pale imitation of the surprise guests that, that Donald Trump brought, the Clinton accusers yeah. back in 2016. And we've seen it time and time again. They're trying to make Make this happen and it just yeah. isn't and we as we've talked about Joe uh, you know we'll see if Hunter Biden is charged with a crime later this year it looks like maybe on tax filings or you know he shouldn't have had a gun when he, you know he possession in his possession we'll see that we'll deal with that as it happens we'll feel the we'll see if there are any electoral impact but even then there's no suggestion that the president did anything wrong and at least at this point the Republicans try as they may and as many hours as they spend on Fox News they have not been able to create anything about the actual Biden crime family that seems to be changing sounds... any voters' minds and instead turning off voters who say you should be focusing on other things. Well, I mean, and, and, and it's so awkward. I mean, they, it's they're awkward. so That's bad a great at way it. Of putting no, it. It's just so it's as awkward as Ron DeSantis trying to, to oh. laugh spontaneously <laughs> oh, at please. an Iowa event. <laughs> please don't. Uh, no, that's, don't show that. No, I, I'm not going to show it. It's just, okay. it's very awkward. But you look at Durham, he has his... He, he tries two cases. Like, oh, we're going to prove that the FBI spied and uh, Hillary Clinton spied. And the juries, two juries, come back out. <sighs> no, not even close. 24 jurors just said no to Durham. His cases were so horrible. He never proved anything. And now you have Comer coming along. And, and they put out a report. And my God, even people on the right who have been lying time and time again about the, quote, Biden crime family, have to say, well, there's no smoking gun there, is there? There's not really anything there, is there? Nothing going back to Joe Biden. And there's not. But it's just, again, it's, it's awkward because they're so bad at this. Uh, and, and as Willie said, with Benghazi, you had an underlying tragedy. You, of, co of right. course, of course, that kind of makes it even more grotesque that they decided that they were going to exploit the deaths of four Americans who gave their lives in service to America to try to drive down Hillary Clinton's poll numbers. But the underlying investigation was a worthy one to see what happened in Benghazi. They just, again, they just, it's perverse that they said, well, let's use these four dead Americans to drive down Hillary Clinton's poll numbers. Here, they literally have nothing. They well, they I have mean, Hunter, and yeah. their focus on Hunter, I think, continues to backfire, because yeah. I just think uh, I, I could be wrong, but I think there's a kind of a bad reaction to going after President Joe Biden's surviving son, and you know who has written a book about his struggles, who has been open about it. And yes, if something you're right. And all of us have said this, if there's a charge against him, we will cover it yeah. as we would cover anything else. But the kind of personalization of the politics against Joe Biden, who is widely known as a very empathetic man, right. who is a, widely known as a very good man, who seems to many people like a good guy. And they go after his son like that. And I think it, it just kind of is cringeworthy. Well, it doesn't work. The thing is, they've got investigations. We've said it here time and again. If Hunter Biden's indicted, if he's found guilty, very sorry about that, but that's the justice system. Something we would and, cover. And, 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 sure. and yeah, but it's not even the covering part of it. It's, huh. it's like Democrats wouldn't go out saying they're going to tear down the rule of law. That they're, you know, Democrats wouldn't go out and say what Marco Rubio says about the jury system. You're ripping out, trying to rip out a basic pillar 
of America's judicial system wouldn't go out saying the sort of things that Donald Trump says, which is if something's not, if courts don't rule in my favor, then let's terminate the Constitution of the United States. That's the extreme viewpoint. That's the excessiveness where they put this failed re reality show host over the United States Constitution and the rule of law. We don't do that here. Democrats don't do that. They're not going to do that if Hunter Biden does end up uh, getting indicted or even going to jail. That's what separates right now Trump Republicans from the Democratic Party.